build 100% here in the Builder's Paradise server. It is our main branch. This is a terrain bunker complete with electronics inside or electricity. Uh, this is a terrain bunker, so I'm trying to find the spot here where we get it started. Bear with me. This will be a bit longer than the one that we typically do on PC, but hopefully this will help people that are trying to get started. So while I'm trying to find a good spot in the terrain, my goodness, this is a really great starter for solos and duos. And if you're kind of rich, then you can build more than one of these, and it makes it even more effective. Okay, so right here you can see this is a perfect position. You could do this anywhere, but the shore is the best place. So you see how the two vertical posts are sticking through, but the horizontal is not? Perfect. That's going to be the part that stays twig all the time, and that you're going to knock out and will collapse the roof tile. It'll make sense in a second. So then you stick one tile over there, one tile down here. And we're going to stick a door frame here. And then we're just going to double check to make sure the mechanism works. We have a roof triangle. This is going to be the bunker portion. And then we're going to have the other triangle right there. And then it looks like it locks in. So it's looking good. Okay, perfect. We're going to knock these out. It'll make more sense. It's just a way to check. You want to make sure this stays 100% under the terrain. You can already see that. Just make sure all of these pieces work. And then I'll try to pull back uh, as best I can, like here, so you guys can kind of see what's going on. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put... Uh, it is a 1 by 2 and again, this is such a great start on a wipe. I use this all the time. You can get this up and running in like 20 minutes. Okay, so since this is the electric wedge, I do start like this. So we're going to take this and upgrade this to wood. We're going to make this stone when you can afford it. And I do stick a wooden door almost immediately because it just keeps people off your back. And again, this is slower, but this is a lot more realistic. This is how I, I you've always seen me do it, right? many times. And so I start with this, and then I stick just a wooden frame here. I'm sorry, a window whoop, window frame. Uh, soft side facing you. This is where the battery's going to go. And then, let me see if I can remember. There's a couple gotchas in here on the Builder's Paradise. <coughs> then I want to say, do we put it, is it, yeah, it's like this. So we're going to put the knobs facing you, and we're going to back it into this corner. So line it up with that tile, push it in the back. That should be enough. Authorize and stick a lock on it quickly. Always make sure this door is closed. And so this is typically how I start because this is all the money I have. And then any stone that you have left, put a cap on it. And then I would say work for your next airlock, which is very important. Oh, this is going to be tricky because we can't fly around. Well, that's the challenge. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we should have gotten that first. huh? Oh, I had it for a second. Well, we'll go outside and try to hit it. Can we get it from here? Please tell me we can. Got it. Wee. Okay, one more time. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so remember, this always stays twig. So the next part that you're going to need for this is stone for this airlock, which is the most important because this gives you the ability to uh, keep people off your doorstep. And yes, things are wood, but that's fine. You're not going to sign off like this. So make that stone. If you're really like broke, you can make that wood as well. Not a big deal. I kind of like say to make that wood <laughs> at first, and then we'll go ahead and make the door here. Now you have an airlock. Let's go ahead and make that stone. So this is a decent airlock. Not the best, but at least it's a start. So let's go ahead and put the cap on top. Now we're talking. Hopefully it doesn't get too dark while we're doing this. So we still don't have the bunker mechanism, but you can already see this is a one by two outside here. Let me just kind of walk around since we don't have the ability to fly. And this area right here is going to be where the battery sits. And this is going to be the bunker entrance. <clears throat> and again, this is just to get you started. You can add on to this a second story. You can build multiple of these. If you already have a main base, you can use this for a farming base. It's good like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get the bunker mechanism sorted out here. So you're going to have this frame here. Go ahead and make this wood. You are going to make this stone. And you can keep this wood. Uh, I guess you don't really have to upgrade that one. I know it seems weird, right? Because you're like, oh, man, I, people can just burn through this. Trust me. And so what I like to do across here, uh, it's probably best we do it like this. Um, we'll leave this twig here, boop, and then we'll stick another twig up here. And then, yes, you can make this wood for now because, hey, it's about keeping stuff cheap. Uh, we're going to make this stone and this wood. And we're going to place, uh, in the console version, we do have to place the ceiling tiles first and then walls because that's how it cuts the procedural corners. So... Uh, if you do want to expand, having this square here that I'm standing on is very important. Because once you place these and settle them in, you can't place a, a foundation next to it. 
So that's why we have that as wood. And then go ahead and face that hard side facing you. And then we can upgrade these to stone. And we're looking pretty good. And now you can actually lock this bunker completely. And there's no metal. Look at this. Right? We're just going to walk right in here. And if you crouch back in the corner like so. And put the triangle roof angle right here. See how it goes blue. Change this to the same material as the one outside. So this is stone. Look at that. And then the way you get out. Isn't that, cu isn't that cute? Hot? Boom. Just slap that one. That's all you got to do. Hot. I know. It's the best, dude. It's the best. It's so cheap. All right, so look at, let's go ahead and flush this out a little bit more, and then we'll get some amenities inside. And then we'll put up just a little bit of honeycomb, and we'll get the electricity cooking. All right, so outside here, we're going to make the half wall, and then this. Hopefully, we got it bright enough because it is getting dark on us. Yeah, see what I mean? This is, like, so good for getting started. And like I said, if you have a main base, use this one as, like, the farming base. You collect a little bit of electricity on the side. You can make a little computer station in here to peep and creep on dome. All right, so right here we have another door. I have that facing inward to create another airlock. And if we have time, I'll show you the uh, the other airlock we put on the outside here. So look at this. Beautiful. And then there's a couple of menus inside we definitely need before we get going. All right, so right here it should snap right. There we go. We'll make this wood because this isn't part of defense at all. And the reason why we have it like this is so we can stand up here and place a medium battery. But the next important thing that we probably should have done first was get your sleeping bag down. I like to stick it right up by the door socket, and but keep it just off of it. So we got the double door here kind of on it, but then back off right up here and then kind of back off and then place this and then just say this is base. Really important because if you seal your bunker, there's no way in. And then since you're in here, by this time, you probably have enough um, like metal cooking. So you can change this to a metal door at some point. We can probably knock this off. And really, that's the most important one that you'll need to have because it keeps people off your door. So, like, if you're playing and the bunker is open, it kind of keeps people, like, yes, they can knock out that wooden door outside, but that's it. You know, like, they'll come in here and then they got to do a raid. we got to wait for that cooldown here. So we'll keep putting up more amenities inside here. Uh, you have your first level one. You can place it back here in the corner. Push. Then if you have enough for your first furnace, which I would imagine that you do, we got to craft one here. Where's our furnace? There we go. Gotta love Builder's Paradise. Place it back there. And then you have room for another sleeping bag right there. It's great. All right, did that? Yeah, okay, the bar went away. Great. So we have that opening outward. And again, you'd have code locks if you have your boy online. But so you can already see how, like, if the bunker's open, you still have an airlock here and you still have metal. So somebody can't just yoke their way in if there's a big group. This stops all the BS. And then as you get more metal, you can make this metal. You would upgrade this door frame. But this is about just going cheap at first. So again, as you go to the outpost and buy, or bandit camp and outpost to buy both solar panels and the medium battery, if you don't find them, you can start to place it like so. So we're going to place this guy right here. We're going to put the little dials out towards you. Get it towards the end of this and kind of slowly move it towards you. should turn blue. There it is. Get it nice and snug in the back. And this is usually before I put the boxes in. And if you don't have this window frame, that's okay. You can use the wooden one, then the metal one. This is the, mo this is the best one to use, or the armored one. But this will get you started. And then let's go ahead and get some electricity situated here before we lose too much. Daylight. So ideally, you want to have two of these for a cluster two solar panels and having the ramp here is, is kind of nice but also you know keep in mind people can also door camp you in this way too so you know it's not you know it's cheap it's cheap it doesn't have everything but it gets you started all right so northeast here face this one out this way i like to do it over the tc and it just gives you more options for expansion later and yes you'll move these as you start to upgrade but hey it's all about collecting power immediately so these are the two we're going to link up. If we go back and something, let me go ahead and turn on my candle. There we go. It's looking good. So what I like to do is I like to use the ceiling tile for the comp combi combiners. I think it's going to be this way. Man, that's real goofy. The way there it goes. Uh, don't tip on me. There's one. I like to place a couple in position because you don't want to have to rewire if you don't have to. 
And so right here, I like to make these purple for the input. So we'll just make this cluster purple. So I don't know if I covered this, but we have northeast and southwest. One is for morning, one is for afternoon. Yes, solar panels produce less power, but they're more consistent from day to day. Wind power is not. And this makes you look low profile. So I'd strongly recommend. If you have a solar panel and a battery, even if it's a car battery, start to charge it. Do not waste, because it's all about time, right? So I think we'll just go like right here. And then I'm kind of just trying to figure out how we're going to, oops. All right, so if you want to back pedal, you can always hit the left trigger. I guess we'll do it like this. I didn't really, I thought it was the other way around, but that's fine. This is This is good for us, right? Sorry the flicker, but it's kind of a softer light than the other one. And I do like to hide the cables the best I possibly can. And yes, you can adjust this bunker in many different ways. This kind of just gives you a good idea of like the baseline for getting electricity going. It's literally the bunker I use almost all the time. And hey, like a lot of times I start off solo and then the group comes in. So like you can squeeze three people in here. It's not comfortable, but you can do it. But if you've got this as a flank base or a farming base, man, it's super OP. And these are kind of just here because once you add that second story, it's going to, you know, you'll rewire these again. And then you'll, most of your loot room will be covered down here. So I'm just trying to make sure this can all be plugged into the battery here ASAP. -y. Let's make the blue wires. We'll bring it down the side here. I try to do it inside the console version here so you guys get a really good idea of how all this works. It's much slower, but hopefully it, it helps. I'll bring in the blue cable here. And bring it down the frame. Bring it inside. And then just plug it in the side here. So it's nighttime, so we're not going to get any charge off that. But at least we'll start the charge. And then this way, if we add more solar panels, we can kind of pipe them into the bottom here. So once you learn the root combiner, it's kind of good to put like at least two. And then it, it, the, the rule of thumb is put at least one more than you think and then that way you don't have to like rewire everything you can kind of just pipe the other one back into the other then let's go ahead and get a light going and maybe a heater i don't want to make this terribly long uh where's our light at where are you there it is and the heater what i like to do did i make a switch i did look at me look at me like this guy right here we'll switch put it right down here I always say to use this. All right, so this is for the output of the battery. I know it starts with just a little charge. So we'll take the output. We'll run the red wire here down the frame. We gotta make that wall wood, by the way. And this goes right up into the switch. And then we can have something like this. So the left side will be for our amenities, so heater and the light. Although I don't think we need the heater in this biome, but that's okay. But hey, farming 2.0, we will at some point. Then we're going to have this little guy right here. So again, if you don't need the heater, you can just kind of go without it. So the left side of this is going to be for our amenities inside here. So the heater and the light. So since in this case, we're doing it with the full setup, we're doing it with the heater. So that's going to be orange. And then as we come out here, it's going to be green for the light. Is it, did I use green for the light? Yeah, close enough. And then we'll bring this up and over. We won't leave this on for too long because, uh, yeah, we don't have enough charge on the battery. And it is nighttime. All right, so what you want to do here is this takes, is it three or two? I guess we'll find out. I want to say to run these both, it's three. I could be wrong. Let's And then we confirm. We turn this on. All right, so it's four. So the heater is three and the light is one. Okay, I knew I was off by something. And what's cool is if you just want the heater on, that's fine. You can just change it back to three. Uh, or you can just flick the light. But what's the reason why we have it set up like this is then you can pipe this off to turrets. Uh, the right side can go to many other things. Part of a trap base. It kind of makes things really nice like that. Or you can just take this completely out if you want to and just put like a splitter and then have a switch. But the, it's important to have that light switch right there because it keeps you from like leaking power. So like, look, when all this is on, we're using five units of power and this will last 20 minutes, which is not bad. Actually, this will last through the nighttime. Not too bad. All right, so let's get this knocked off here. Uh, this is a loot room here. I won't spend too much time on this. You can do this in many different ways. Pack in your boxes as you please, but keep them real tight. 
in a pinch, let me just show you a technique I've been using as a solo, or at least when I'm starting as a solo. I um, Sometimes your airlock in the front and your bunker portion is contested pretty heavily. So sometimes if it's like in your cooking and you don't want to have it exposed, you can just place one of these like right here in the time being and cook. Right? Pretty hot. Just saying, that's an option. Then you can kind of move it out. But you're like, hey, two furnaces are not going to be enough. Agreed. So let's go ahead and make the airlock out here. Look at this. We already got the basic amenities here. So, right, so we're going to make the airlock. Uh, hopefully we have enough terrain for this. Okay, so right here you can see this is where the bunker closes. So you're going to place, normally you can place a, uh, what is this, a, a triangle foundation. See how it's elevated? That's where you want it. You place one in the back and place one towards you. Uh, and then knock this one out. So you have room for your bunker. Then I like to place walls here that are stone. And then we place a door frame here. So this will be stone. And this will also be stone. So what we can do, let's go ahead and make these doors real quick. I like to say I have nothing. You know what I mean? Really get that deception going. So anything that's stone, I like to make a metal door, but I like to hide it with the wood. A lot of people are like, man, that base sucks. I'm like, that's the idea. It's supposed to look like this. <laughs> because let's be honest, if you're a Zerg and you haven't pulled aggro, you're probably not going to hit this base because it looks like doo-doo butter. Right? And it's important I leave these wood. Because all you need to do is just keep people off your back long enough, right? So this is a single pass through airlock. You know, it opens inward. This opens in like that. So if somebody DBs you, they can't just walk back out. They gotta fight their way out. It should be fairly common for most people, but if it's not, that's why. Just makes it so people can't run deep on you. And so what this does, this protects your upper deck, and so you can leave your bunker with some level of safety, and this gives you another area to do some processing. I'll catch up on chat here in a second. I see it moving. I'm sorry. Let's get the radioactive one here. See, like, we can put an extra furnace here. Okay, so you're like, man, that's wide open. That's not that great. I get you. So what we can do here is this be like a shelf. We'll put a cap on this. This just needs to be wood, nothing crazy. These also can just be wood. And then what we'll do here is we'll give ourselves roof access. And we'll make this a wooden frame as well because it, later on if you build a second floor, you're going to want to make this like a garage door. I do like to make this one stone, but if you can't afford it, wood is fine. Again, it's about just keep people off your back. Uh, I like to leave this here. It makes the jump a bit easier, but it, I leave it twig. That way you can knock it out if you need to. Not a big deal. These can be, um, these will eventually be stone. I guess we'll make them stone to kind of confuse the matter for people that are looking at the base. And what this does is this gives you roof access. It gives you multiple ways to leave the base, but it also confuses the raider. And it definitely works. Oh, my goodness. This works so well. <laughs> it. I've seen people raid the outside of this so many times. So as long as you stick your valuables on the interior, you're good to go. And then a lot of times I'll try to stick another door here if I can, if I can afford it. Sometimes that'll be stone. You know what? We'll make that stone. Let's. Yeah, we're rich. Here we go. And then we'll have this one open like so. That way, like, you've got so many different ways to leave the base, and it's not really going to affect anybody. It's not going to affect their, like, overall raid. So then I guess if this is all stone on the interior, let's go ahead and make this stone. Just know that if you don't have the stone right away, which is <laughs> totally possible, you can make this wood. It's about keep pe keeping people off your back and giving yourself room to, uh, you know, just get out of the base. And see how cheap this is? This is dirt cheap. Let me go ahead and open this on the interior. There we go. And so if you do have both metal on the interior and, like, stone, like this, the light-up door, then you uh, should most definitely make uh, everything on the interior here that's part of this airlock stone. But if you look on the outside, it is extremely confusing for a raider. Because you see this mixture of like, what is this? Oh yeah, we can knock this off in the back. You're like, what is this? It looks like nobody knows what they're doing, <laughs> right? And you're just like, what? Why? How? Oh yeah, don't we need? Oh yeah, we don't need to make that because that's the airlock goes in. Yeah, so like if you have this patchy work like this, it just confuses people. 
it's so cheap, right? And it's, as long as you do it modular, like I was showing, it makes it so accessible for a solo. It's really great for a jumping off point. If you need a starter base and you want to do a bigger base, this is a good start. You can use this as a farming base later if you decide to build somewhere else. Uh, it's just a great base. Even, um, I've seen a lot of this on PC now. We can uh, pick up some of this stuff, or even on the second floor, you can put it in a computer station so you can peep on dome. You can use this as another base to store more electricity. It makes it super OP. And let's go ahead and look at the upkeep. Look at that, 947 stones, so that's a stone node, 60 metal fragments, 60, and that, so that's a metal node and a tree, so 402 wood, easy, easy. And then if we just make a couple quick upgrades like this, let's say we don't even have the garage door, right? Because that happens. Say we don't even have that, you just want a, a metal door. That's okay, boom. The cost only goes up a little bit. If you're solo, definitely use the wooden locks for sure. And then as soon as you get this frame, slap it up. And if you don't have it, remember, just stick the wooden frames or anything else that will go in that slot. And then it makes it more OP. So let's go ahead and look at that. Upkeep again. Look at that. Nine, 967 stone, 94 metal fragments, 342 wood. And then again, if you're trying to beef up this base, we'll just show a couple of quick upgrades you can do. Look at this. You have like all this roof access. And remember, you can always soft set out these walls and stuff if you want to upgrade this base to a second floor. So if you want a honeycomb, you would honeycomb out here. Each of these are going to cost you 900 stone per triangle. You can honeycomb this, although it makes it a bit tight in this door. I usually tell people uh, to make this metal first to really kind of confuse the issue. And then just make these stone. I guess you can make that metal. We might as well since I accidentally hit it. Yeah, so each of these triangles will cost you 900. So they're basically a stone node for each. Uh, what is this? Honeycomb. Yeah, very, very versatile. You can start off in the very basic piece with like a handful of stone. Uh, you can get your little airlock going. And you don't even need any blueprints or even metal fragments for that matter to get started. And it gives you just enough protection to keep people off your back. And the wood really draws people in such a way where they're like, oh, this is trash, you know? Because if you've got a bunch of C4, because it's expensive. I know it's not impossible to make, but, like, think about it. If you see a 1x2 that's got these doo-doo butter, like, <laughs> improvements, you're, like, probably not going to waste our C4 on that. And that's the idea. Unless you give them a reason to, this is this is hot. This keeps it juicy. I probably should have made the caps on those before I did that. I just I automatically assume I can fly around. Man, custom servers are going to be so good. I'm just going to finish up these upgrades here so you can see what this looks like, and we'll see how much it costs. We'll have to jump upstairs. We'll hit the TC. And this is something you can use today, dude. It's very versatile. And then you can also, so the core of this is a 1x2. You can turn this into, uh-oh, did we just get kicked? Ooh, it can turn this into a 2x2 two two with the same mechanism. Just make sure the terrain portion works in the front. Well, it looks like we froze for some reason, so I guess that's where the electric wedge is going to stop, but you get the idea. I think we full-on crashed. We're, like, hanging over here, so... There you go. That's the old 